Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today, uh, for the first time, we're uh, interviewing a wonderful artist in Unica Rogers here at our brand new location in Durango, Colorado. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got into Blue Rain Gallery, and we're excited. What a journey. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so as most of our podcasts go, we, we like to know a little bit about you. So tell us um, a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and your, your journey, and uh, how you got started into art. Well, um, I was born and raised in Eastern Europe, in Czechoslovakia. And like I said, it's been a journey <laughs> to actually get here, um, not just to Blue Rain Gallery, but to here, to um, Southwest. Um, so yeah, I was born and raised up until I was 13. And then my parents took the journey of escaping out of the communist country to get us to Canada. So I spent a few impressionable years there and then ended up in Mississippi on a tennis scholarship and spent most of my life there. So in some ways I feel like that's almost like my home, the, the Mid-South. And then six, no, it was actually longer than that. Eight, eight years ago, I moved to um, Telluride and moved here for art to be more or less a full-time painter. That's the dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, for those of you uh, who are learning about Unica today, uh, what's wonderful and unique, like her name, Unica, is how she paints and what she paints with. Tell us, tell us about how you developed what you're using as a medium and, and your, your transition to where we're at right now. Yeah, so my art background started, um, I guess, um, when I was a little girl in, in Slovakia, I, I really wanted to be an architect. Um, I remember I wasn't much of a painter or I wasn't drawing much. I was actually building shelters <laughs> um, in nature just because that was I didn't have many toys and that was kind of my thing. And, and so when... Um, we moved to, to Canada, I was learning how to speak English. And so the things I excelled in was um, math and art, which equals architecture. And then I, my, my scholarship, my tennis scholarship led me to a school that didn't have architecture. And so I had to decide what I was gonna do. And I chose interior design just because that was um, the closest thing to architecture, only to find myself in a class learning how to um, choose a carpet based on its f um, fire extinguishing values and stuff. And it happens to be that the teacher that was teaching the class was substituting for a professor who was pregnant at a time. But um, my teacher's name was Marcella Small. She was a ceramic professor and she talked me into going into ceramics not knowing what I was getting myself into and I found myself loving ceramics and I ended up um, getting my major in it and eventually ended up going to getting my master's in ceramics and I was in Mississippi and at, at the time I was there there was a lot of potters a lot of very influential potters and I really wanted to be a potter. <laughs> I already designed like what I was gonna make. And so here comes me to graduate school in um, University of Memphis. And they pretty much laughed at me and, and said they don't, they don't do masters in crafts. And so there I was trying to figure things out. And for the most part I did, I ended up doing um, my work in three, in three dimensional design um, installations and trying to figure out what, how I was going to graduate. I didn't want to like fail and walk away. So there was um, a little piece of me that Marcella from the undergrad school instilled in me. She would um, take me 
on clay digs in Mississippi, and there's lots of clay digs, and lots of different colors of clay. And I have had huge amounts of garbage bags, just because that's what we did. We just stuffed garbage bags, and and so I did these installations with these with these fa- found clays, trying to figure out how to how to work them, because le- there was a lot of impurities, and they were exploding left and right in the mm-hmm. kill. And um, and over the course of my my studies, I noticed that my studio clothes were turning colors and they were not washing out and it's permeable yeah and there i was breaking my bag back carrying these heavy insulations and i thought gosh if i could figure out how to work the stain and maybe like do two-dimensional instead of three-dimensional this could this could work for me long term otherwise i would probably be in a wheelchair Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so i tested it in it worked, and and that's you how te- it started. What did you test it on? On canvas. Oh, on a pa- on a painting. On yeah, on a I spread I sprayed canvas down and um, just took. I, at the time, I didn't use brushes. I just took my hands and started rubbing it in. It was very abstract, very fast. I didn't have time to mess with it. I had big installations to build, and and it worked. So that was kind of like my back to like. This is where I was going to go. And so clays can come in all kinds of colors. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So were you using a whole diversity of clays, or was it monochromatic, just a few different mellow colors? Yeah, so at first it was it was um, a red clay. Um, and it's kind of like my brand. It's the red the dirt. The red dirt girl? What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what it started. So it was, uh, was kind of like that's where... This thing was born with with a clay from Greenwood, Mississippi, and um, and then I just started adding clays from Mississippi. There's lots of different clays. Um, in fact, it's kind of a um, you know like an affirmation of what I was doing was um, I went to a Roseanne Cash concert. Uh, she had an opening concert at Dockery Farms, which is where the blues musicians started their careers and it's on the banks of Tallahatchie River which has a lot of the clay that I carry and uh, she's this amazing obviously um, singer-songwriter but she really tells the stories and she was standing in front of this big crowd and she was talking about how in Mississippi there are these three places these special places that um, she founds like are the, are the most important places for her for her creative talents and and she named them and it just happened to be the three places where I was getting clay <laughs> and they were very obscure it's not like if I tell you be like you wouldn't know and um anyway my husband had to carry me out of there crying like I was just like oh my gosh <laughs> I cannot believe she just she just named my my clay locations which I kind of keep secret but she kind of outed me in, in a way that nobody knew <laughs> yeah well, um, let's talk a little bit about the, the canvas preparation. Are you using a gesso first, or you're just going straight to the canvas so it absorbs in? Yeah, so I have to build my canvases because um, there's no gesso. Because once I put gesso, um, the clay won't stick. So the characteristics of clay are that the clay expands when it's wet, and when, when it dries, it shrinks. And so that's how it holds on to the fibers in canvas or so watercolor it's, so it's kind of stain yeah which probably led to a couple other uh mediums that you experimented with right and what are those wine mm-hmm. and now i have mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> how about coffee i have you experimented i haven't with that? experimented with coffee um on canvas just because it's it's very light stain same yeah. thing with tea yeah um also wine. Um, I tried wine on canvas and it looked terrible. In fact, I just took it and took the stripped the canvas off the frame and going to reuse the frame for something else. <laughs> uh, but it works really well on watercolor paper. Yeah. So for those uh, who know Blue Rain Gallery, um, Unica Rogers fits in perfectly because we're about innovation with refinement. And I, I remember uh, Unica came visit with me, was that six, seven years ago or so? 
Yeah, it was and about it, eight years ago, I think. And <laughs> we you're, were just, you're still, time flies. You're yeah. still developing the refinement. The innovation was there. Yeah. And your skill level's just gone through the roof. And uh, it's been wonderful to watch you uh, grow. Um, something else that's wonderful about Unica, as you're listening, is um, she loves adventure. I, I think, do. right? <laughs> you think. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, some of the pictures, if you want to follow her on Instagram, uh, is it under Red Dirt Girl, your Instagram line? Uh, you will see her in the, the tallest peaks of Colorado <laughs> 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 or in the oceans. or I mean, she's, just, she's everywhere in, in uh, two places that most people wouldn't necessarily visit or go. Uh, so some of the paintings and the current inventory that she brought uh, are scenes near Telluride, right? Mm -hmm. Like the peaks behind you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us about uh, tell us about those peaks. What's so interesting and unique about them? Well, the quick story is is that, like you mentioned, I like to go to places that not too many people can go. I like to get lost or try to get lost. It's it's kind of hard for me to. I have a like a sixth sense of knowing where I am. Um, but these peaks I summoned with my husband. They were the sh the paintings were painted from pictures that I shot from the summits. Um, and of course there's um, the, the first half of my painting process is, is actually um, collecting the clay and going into the elements and experiencing the elements and observing them, taking pictures, kind of like documenting it. And then going back to the gallery and, you know, painting and it's a very slow process obviously so the, the the clays that you're currently using to depict the uh, peaks are those clays from here or those clays from uh, mississippi still most of the clays are from here it's um like you said it's a it's a constant development um i have not found all the colors i really want to use for these paintings here in colorado but i did find most of them here. So the paintings behind me are painted mostly with Colorado clays. I do have a clay from Mississippi there. It's it's hard to find that pure white clay. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, I like the thought of collecting the clays um, that actually create these mountains. Um, and I know what that's like. I, I was married to a potter for 24 years, and <laughs> <laughs> we'd have to... Uh, develop or mine our own clay and, and mill it and uh, take the impurities yeah. out. So I, I understand how you how you got there. Uh, it's just such a, a unique process. You don't uh, run into people that are painting paintings with clay in the fashion that you're doing. Uh, what is it about aspens that you like? So the aspens have a spiritual component in it, and I it's 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 a strange thing for me to talk just because. Um, Growing up in Eastern Europe, I was I was raised as an atheist, and but my parents um, they like they like to travel as well, and uh, they would take me to places. They would take me to historic places. A lot of them were churches, and um, was that because of the art? Yeah, they to or just history. Like history. there, a lot of it is history. Um, we didn't go to mass. We just visited. Um, the churches for its architecture and um, but I would walk into a church and I would feel something I would feel like I need to kneel but it was not something my parents clearly taught me it was forbidden um, so I had a I had an experience when I was in Mississippi in in, um, in undergrad my last year I had a from like a like a depression of sorts. And um, to make the long story short, my professor that had a huge influence on me with the ceramic professor, um, that was part of the healing. She would take me to her house and that's that's how the clay collecting started. And there was this, we talked a lot about, um, you know, very spiritual things obviously. And, and um, I kind of, discovered spirituality through through that experience and and so the aspen happened um going back to my experience it was like a deja vu experience of my childhood 
um, coming to Telluride for the first time, uh, we walked into an Aspen Grove and had that feeling of, I think I need to kneel. And I think I did. <laughs> and just had this moment of deja vu and thinking, this looks so much like being in a church. You know, you had these tall Aspen trunks. They look like Gothic pillars. And then you have the leaves and they move and they twinkle. They're, it's like illuminated windows in a Gothic cathedral, you know, it's kind of you have this interesting light coming through the leaves and it was a very kind of a spiritual experience and and I just thought, oh my gosh, I have to capture this. Well, how do, how do I capture it? So I just had to paint it. Um, and so I did. And so that, so I call them um, Aspen Cathedrals. Or, yeah. I, can, I can see exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. I think people find spirituality in different ways, but there's nothing more powerful than nature itself. So when you're at the tallest parts of these peaks, how tall are they? Um, most of the peaks in around Telluride are over 13,000. There's very, I think there's five. I'm just not counting on my hand. There's probably five. There are 14ers. But the ones I painted, they're not 14ers. They're just 13ers. <laughs> <laughs> Have you yeah. been, have you been to all those peaks? I try to. I I kind of collect them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, something that you mentioned um, that people should know about you is you're you're a fantastic photographer as well. Thanks. Yeah, very beautiful, and I I can see where you're getting the inspiration from. Um, I think for now we'll leave it there. I want to thank you for coming thank and sharing you. a little bit about yourself today. Thank you. And as we go through this journey, we'll be talking some more. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'd um, like to encourage everybody to subscribe to our podcast. You can uh, reach us through our YouTube channel or any of the platforms that do uh, podcasts, as well as BlueRainGallery.com under our podcast bar. Uh, I'd like to encourage you as well to bring art into your everyday life by going to BlueRainPrintShop.com. Thank you, Unica, for coming in. Thank you. <laughs>